I want to prosper. I want to prosper. I want to prosper. I want to prosper. Hey, Prosper Nation. It's me, Dennis Velasco, and welcome to today's episode of e commerce stories, Philippines edition with uh, no, no other than Michael Uy of Zoom Auto Spa. Michael, what's up, buddy? Hello, Dennis. Um, it's good to be um, back talking to you. Um, I remember when you visit here in Cebu, you had a great time. You were able to um, taste the uh, Cebuano Tuslabua. That was really awesome. <laughs> How was it? How was it? Yeah, man. Um, it was awesome to see you in person in, in Cebu. And I'm always just uh, impressed by the community and all the rich culture that you guys have there. I can't wait till my uh, next trip back. And um, speaking of, maybe we can go ahead and jump in. Maybe you can just take a few minutes to introduce yourself, tell everybody about you, your background, where you're from, and tell us about Zoom Auto Spa. Sure. Um, well, hey, Prosper Nation, my name is Michael. You can call me Mike. Um, I'm from Cebu City. Um, I have my what I'm passionate about is I have a strong passion for anything related to business. And that's the reason why I, I talked to Mr. Dennis here. Um, but particularly in sales and marketing, I enjoy sharing my knowledge and expertise in these areas. And I find great satisfaction in helping others improve their sales and marketing skills. Um, Zoom Auto Spa, well, my business offers a convenient solution uh, for busy individuals um, like any business owners. Uh, my company provides a one-of-a-kind car wash services right in the mall. So while you shop, dine, or run errands, our dedicated team will work their magic and make your car shiny and clean. No, no more wasting time looking for a car wash outside the mall. Our car wash while you shop concept ensures that your car is taken care of, saving you time and effort. So yeah. <laughs> cool, man. So wait a minute. You've got a marketing and sales background, and that's kind of the, uh, it sounds like some of the core principles that, um, you know, interest you, but then you've got this automotive, you know, professional car wash service. How did you, where did you begin? Did you begin with the passion of automotive or did you begin with the passion of uh, marketing and sales? Tell us which one did you start with? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, my entrepreneurial journey started in 2013 when I worked in sales and marketing in Australia. I had the opportunity to work with a remarkable leader who not only honed my skills in sales and marketing, but also taught me valuable lessons on running a successful business. So after my visa expired, I decided to move back to the Philippines where I applied the knowledge I gained in Australia. This newfound expertise propelled me into my entrepreneurial journey. But starting a business is never easy. I face a lot of challenges. But my experiences in Australia taught me grit and persistence. In my few years of running a business, I experienced the ups and downs of entrepreneurship. However, I was always determined to succeed and work really hard every single day. Through hard work and dedication, I was able to turn my business into a successful one. But with regards to the um, automotive, I find a lot of gaps. In, in, the, in the industry, um, specifically in car wash business. Because, you know, when we talk about car wash, it's going to be messy. People there, the one working there, they're going to be on their sandals or maybe even they're shit, shirtless. <laughs> and they have, they've been smoking, something like that. So I want to bring, or I want to put that, the industry into the next level. And that's the reason why I started there. Dude, that is awesome. So, but wait a minute, we got to go back in time a little bit. Sure. Why did you go to Australia? So you're from Cebu originally, yes. and you've got an opportunity to go to Australia. Tell us, what was that opportunity about? Why did you, at that stage, want to try to go to Australia? That's a good question, actually. Um, for anyone who doesn't know about me, um, I'm not like a business person per se, okay? Um, I graduated having a nursing degree. 
<laughs> oh, because <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, um, in, during my time, it was the time that a lot of opportunities to go abroad. If you are, if you have that nursing degree, or if you have a nursing job or profession, because they say the greener pasture is right over there. <laughs> but um, to 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 provide you the details, um, the, the that passion was never in 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 grind in my heart. Like I didn't see myself being a nurse, but because you know I was I was sold to that vision that you can actually earn money through the nursing job. But I was not really like, um, how do you call this? I'm not. I don't have that bad feeling that I, I studied um, nursing. Um, and then go went to to business. However, because of that, it was my stepping stone. It was my entry to Australia. And during that time I was studying um, in, in Australia, I was able to get work from this sales and marketing company. And I'm in love with how they work with their people, um, how they teach the, those skills. And it actually helped me get out from my comfort zone because to tell you i'm an introvert kind of person actually i don't like to talk to people like this <laughs> like talk to train people or even talking to my relatives way, way back so it was because of that skill set and because of my determination um, that really propelled me to who i am today so that was actually the beginning of my so wait, that means uh was your mom friends with Jokoi's mom? <laughs> like, you know, they're related, all, yeah. All of those. They might, they, they might be related or have the same thing. Oh, Anak, mugging nurse ka. You can go abroad. Oh. Money. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, I can no. relate to Jokoi's story, actually. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. So I guess through that path, you had to do what you needed to do to survive. And somehow you found yourself. Uh, you know, working with a company and some leadership that opened your eyes to the world of professional marketing and sales, it sounds like. And that's where you kind of found that connection. Yes, correct. So you 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 made it to Australia, right? And, and that's not easy to do. You found something that you could be passionate about despite, you know, having to face a change. But why on earth would you go through all that and come back to the Philippines? That's a good question, actually, because from the very beginning, my business had a very clear vision and with, with that mindset, all right, to uplift and empower uneducated Filipinos by imparting a strong work ethic through sales and marketing. So having able to train individuals from various backgrounds, because back in Australia, it's multicultural. So I was able to um, train um like Indians, Americans, Russian, and Asians during my time in Australia, actually. And it occurred to me that, that I should extend this opportunity to Filipinos when I establish my own business. So this decision is driven by a sense of social responsibility as well. So it has that deeper pur purpose. And as I believe in the potential of Filipinos and want to make a positive impact on their lives. Dude, that's why you and I get along so well, man, is, oh, yeah. you know, that that vision to, you know, build a better Philippines because we have so much opportunity and we have the best culture of people, you know, in the world out here. So, you know, we can do a lot with the knowledge and experience that we've had, you know, in the past, wherever it might come from, whether it's Australia, Silicon Valley or whatnot. So yeah. let's shift gears. Zoom Auto Spa. How was that born? How was that born? <laughs> yeah, um, well, it started with me starting to go out here. When we came back to the Philippines, um, started from scratch, actually. I had to go door to door. I had to meet business owners to present my products or services. So I kind of like doing a hit and miss. And because I have that skill way back, I used it up and basically I was able to provide that value and by doing education to, to customers, 
during a car show event. And that's where I validated my idea. And from there, like just give you to share you um, a quick um, story. Uh, when I first started uh, the, the waterless car wash concept uh, here in Cebu, I never knew that it could actually, it has the potential because when I first displayed my products during that event, I was on that first day, I was sold out. I was like, wow, um, this is something that I can actually do. This is a validation that I can create a business out of it. So from there, I learned um, through the, the, the market, how, how they uh, accepted the, the idea of a waterless cleaning concept. Although there's a lot of bashers out there, like it doesn't work and all that. There's going to be all these rejections. I understand all that. And especially I'm in sales, so I, I understand the, the, the fact of rejections. But then again, um, it just outweighs that this is something that I can work on. And this is something that what I truly believe that I can grow. So, so yeah. let's step back for a second just to uh, because it sounds like you have the, you know, uh, the car wash is a service. Right. But you use the word product and you use the word uh, waterless car wash. Can you maybe explain for everybody what are the different products and services that you do actually have so that we can get a good concept of that? Um, you know, the overall uh, solutions and services that you guys offer? Yeah, sure. Well, the, the only difference that what I offer and versus a traditional car wash business, because when you talk about car wash, you're going to be using water. And um, as per study, um, every car wash, um, when you car wash a unit, okay, or a vehicle, it takes like 60 gallons of water to, for, for, for the whole car to be washed, right? And as part of our um, concept, not only about social responsibility, but also to the environmental aspect as well, we're actually saving up that water aspect, the usage of water. So um, in regards to our services we offer, um, the, the product itself, it, it, it comes with a solution that will wash at the same time, wax your car, and gives that protection as well. So um, the formulation that we use is actually came from Western countries, but the raw materials that we are using is actually um, here in the Philippines. So typically it's probably Pinoy made, and now it's branded as Zoom Auto Spa. And um, just to give you a, a quick story about why is it Zoom, like. That's X, then there's four O's, then M. Yeah. Okay, so um, actually the X there stands for uh, express because in a traditional car wash, you have to like wash it first and you have to wipe it down, you have to dry it down and you apply the wax and you buff it off. So it takes a lot of process, right? But with ours, that's why it's express because although we use water because it's less water, not the water less, that means no water, it's just less water. So oh. we just just remove the, the dirt first, okay? Using the water, a little bit of water actually. And then we spray on using our ceramic wax. And then it will actually, using a microfiber towel that will prevent it from scratch. Using a one direction, okay? Not the um, circular motion first. And then we use another microfiber towel to buff it off manually. So in that way, we prevent it from scratch. And at the same time, we provide the protection because the wax in it has that protection. And then you know, in the same way, we save our time for our, for our customers as well. So that's why it's expressed. And then the four O's, okay? I kind of provided this little bit of story because <laughs> you say about auto spa, it's, it's automobile. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a car, right? Because, and the reason why there's four O's because there's four wheels in one car. <laughs> so, so yeah, I'm not, to, to give you um, the exact meaning of that is because we started with four main products, which is our ceramic wax, we have our uh, degreaser, we have our freshener, and we have our tar shine. So we started with that, and then we, we kind of innovate later on as well. And then auto spa, that's because it's, it's like a spa to your, to your car. So, yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> 
you got to keep the the wheels in good condition. So where can people find, you know, your service and your products? Because I think that's also really unique about, you know, your business model. Yeah, um, well, exclusively, you can find our products or services right in the malls of, uh, especially here in Cebu, we have um, we have presence in SMC side, SM City, SM Consolation, Park Mall, Andrew World. Uh, we also have um, in Streetscape and Rubicons Galleria um, and other uh, malls as well when we do our pop-up stores. So, but we also have other nation, we're actually nationwide. So we also have branches in uh, in Mandaloyong, in Cherry Show. Oh. We also have in Ormoc, um, as well as in Cagayan de Oro as well for SM Uptown and Downtown. So we are actually situated in malls. And for our products, um, right now it's exclusive in our in our stalls or in our booths. But because of we are kind of innovating as well, so we I would like I would love to put it uh, to have it as online to have it an online presence. So this is the reason why I'm, I'm also part of the Prosper Nation as well because I really love the um, the platform how easy it is to to um, to navigate. And yeah, um, recently, um, this is actually what's um, the future of, of Zonato Spa, which is to, to be in the digital space. That's cool, man. Got to uh, see the future of opportunities in every industry, including the automotive. So basically, if I was to go into one of the outlets, I would be greeted by a Zoom Auto Spa professional and they would offer, you know, what sounds like, you know, really uh, a, a delicate process to wash my car, but in a less water type of process. And right. then you've got the, um, I guess, the solutions, the custom solutions uh, and waxes that I could buy for post-washing care and stuff like that. Did I capture that right? Yes, that is absolutely correct. All right. That's cool, man. I think uh, a lot of people wouldn't probably imagine the automotive and the, you know, car care industry to embrace digital. What was it in your mind that triggered, hey, I need to innovate my business? Well, yes. Um, as they say, you need to innovate your business or you evaporate. <laughs> <laughs> don't want that <laughs> <laughs> yeah but in today's rapidly evolving business landscape it is very crucial to embrace innovation especially if you come from a traditional face-to-face -face sales and retail environment or even providing that service so therefore i highly recommend establishing an online presence for your products or services um, this step enables us to reach a broader audience adapt to changing con consumer behaviors and stay competitive in the market as well. So embracing digital platforms like Prosperina will open doors to new opportunities out there and pave way for future success. And that's the reason why uh, we have that, um, the motto of continuous improvement and that's Kaizen. <laughs> well, tell us about that because when I um, visited you in Cebu, which you are an amazing host, right? And... <laughs> You know, I when I went to your office, it did not look anything like you were in the automotive business, right? right. I saw motivational, you know, uh, mantras and and sayings, and I saw, you know, representations of uh, kaizen, a you know a you know improve you know a, a type of improvement model. Tell, you know, how does that fit into your business? Yes, yeah, so. Um... It ingrained to the, the the culture that we're trying to um, establish here in the company, and not only in Zoom Auto Spa, but with, with the new business model we're doing or the new business venture that I'm doing right now. Um, a lot of like business friends having these problems, like how do they improve their sales? How do they hit their targets? How do they do their customer service? So all of this like problems during our meetups, um, I kind of incorporate them and I was trying to uh, think that 
how can I help this kind of businesses? So this is the reason why Kaizen was born. Um, not only because it was, typically it was only for my team, for Zoom Autospa. But right now, it become more broader because I have that, um, I, I, I want that, the skill set that I have, I want it to, to share to other business owners and even for, for you as well, um, Dennis, um, for this to, for, to work. Because um, what I found out that most businesses actually need sales, right? And everybody. <laughs> everybody, every business, right? This is the lifeblood of every business. But the, the, the thing is, um, people tend to forget or people tend to um, not practice sales pitches or sales, their sales scripts or, or, or their customer service. And this is the reason why they, they, they didn't hit their targets. So with my business model right now, it's, it's actually a training program that I offer to businesses that for me, um, I will be able to be the one to, to be impart my knowledge, what I've learned or experienced back in Australia. This is not just something that I want to teach because I learned through YouTube. <laughs> or <laughs> teach, all right? But this is something that I want to impart my knowledge and experience back in Australia and be able to help their staff, their crew, be able to deliver the right message or deliver their sales pitches efficiently. So that, that's the reason why I built that Kaizen. Well, it's definitely uh, important to have a framework or a system to create repeatable, you know, results. And I just thought it was really cool because that's what I saw and I experienced when I went to your company that you guys really focused on training, personal and career development, not just how to wash a car and, you know, how cars and automobiles work, right? And mm -hmm. You know, I think that's, you know, that's going to create, you know, better equipped, a better equipped team that will deliver more than just a service, but a great experience. And I think that's what a lot of people uh, fail on. And uh, I don't know, it just, you know, it, uh, it shocks me on some of the customer experiences that you, you get out there. So it's really cool to see that you guys embrace that. Now, you guys have been... Um, Achieving steady success over how long have you guys been in business? Uh, well, with my car wash business, it's now um, on its sixth year. Wow. Yeah. That's an amazing milestone. And I know you guys have over a dozen locations. You know what? So, you know, when you look back, is there any pinnacle moment where, you know, you felt like, wow, this is the one of the biggest memories of success? That you've been able to reach and what, you know how did you get there well one of the most uh, significant achievements thus far has been um well it's because uh we're able to successfully expand my brand from a single location to multiple branches um through franchising we have managed to establish 17 branches nationwide and wow. uh, this growth has attracted numerous investors as well who have placed their trust in the brand Dude, that's awesome. And, uh, you know, to achieve that level of success is not easy. So when it comes to challenges, there's probably many, but what are the two or three or one that really is tattooed in your brain that, you know, really sticks out? That was one, you know, one of those, you know, moments where you almost, you know, gave up or pivoted or. Yeah, uh, well, the most daunting challenge that I have. Um, encountered thus far revolves around creating of legal contracts. I have learned firsthand not to rely on verbal agreements because as I have experienced being double-crossed by so-called business partners, um, oh. but this experience has taught me the importance of having a well-drafted contract to protect my interests and ensure the integrity of business agreements as well. But that was the first thing that I had when I first started here in the Philippines. But yeah, um, aside from that, there's going to be a lot of challenges along the way. Um, you, you get challenges from managing people, um, challenges on um, dealing with like leasing managers and all that. <laughs> so, yeah. you, can you can say it. We all face those same things. 
<laughs> so yeah, but that was the, the first thing that I've learned. And um, from there, it was not really like I, I regret on, but it was something that, okay, I have to go through that to become who I am today. Dude, um, it does take a lot of resilience because I have seen a lot of tech startups fail because founders and co-founders um, at different stages don't see eye to eye on whatever the case might be. And that can not only be uh, painful, but it can be a huge distraction. So without naming any names, what, what happened? Well, this is how it started. Like um, before, when I first started, like I, when I came back to the Philippines, I realized that the business landscape here is quite different than the business landscape in Australia. So, you know, Australians are, um, they're trustworthy. They, they always do the right thing. They have that integrity, but here is quite different. So, um, but I'm pretty sure that there are good people out there as well, of course, but um, with my experience, um, it was like I was because I was like um, like getting supplies there in Manila before, and um, you know they because my sales is really really good here in Cebu, so yeah. he kind of told me that okay you're gonna be the the head in Visayas in Mindanao. Something like that. We, but we don't have that contract because I trusted the person um, and it was it was okay. Now the, the problem was because the because the, the demand is is actually getting bigger and bigger. So I, I need business partners to to help me uh, with, with the operations and with the expansion. And this has happened before Zoom Auto Spa, by the way. Okay. Okay. Um, this is this happened when I was first started. Um, educating about the waterless car wash concept. So I have a different product before that I carry, a different brand. Now, after that, because I introduced <laughs> my business partner to my supplier, which I shouldn't have, okay, um, they kind of like, they, they double-crossed me in a way that they want to know the real price that I got from my supplier. So for me, because I'm doing business, so I make sure that I have a profit margin coming from my business partners because they're not, they were not there during the first few years of yeah. the business. So they just came in for the ride. So, so I kind of put a margin for me because when they invested on me, I, I buy from the supplier and then from there, we sell the products and then they get their share. So from there, because they don't want to, to pay up the, the margin, so they went straight to the supplier, and then my supplier, for whatever reason, he he took the the story in, and then that's that's the time that oh I was being out of the picture. So pretty much, I I experienced how Steve Jobs was fired from his own. <laughs> <pocket>. <laughs> so yeah, man. Well, that's a bummer, man. I think uh you know again many kinds of disagreements and misalignments can happen to your point when things aren't in writing. And I just noticed how I, you know, on the positive note, a lot of Filipinos are very eager and excited to get into business, but I find that people, no matter where they are, sometimes they get into business too fast together and they haven't thought through all of the difficulties all the realities. And yeah, that's a tough lesson learned, but, you know, to your point, um, I'm sure it's made you a lot smarter than, you know, <laughs> before yeah. we won't let that happen again. Yes, I agree. Like from there, like, again, I, I didn't really like feel bad about to those kind of, to those people, but right now it was kind of like laugh about it when, when I, when we talk about it with my wife and um, then again, the, the thing is we learn from it and we move on. And basically that's the reason why probably we are um, having this level of success because coming from that experience as well. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's going to make you a better person. So you got to accept the good and the bad, right? If you want to get to 
you know, reaching whatever goal you set for yourself. So um, speaking of where you are today, I'd love to hear where you're going in the future. Any big plans that you want to share about where you might be going with uh, Zoom Auto Spa, Kaizen, your team? Sure. Well, the future vision of Zoom Auto Spa revolves around expanding its online presence and establishing multiple branches through franchising in the coming years. The goal is to leverage the power of digital platforms um, to reach a wider customer base and provide a top-notch car care services as well. By embracing franchising, Zoom Auto Spa aims to create a network of trusted partners who can replicate a successful business model, ensuring consistent quality and customer satisfaction across different locations. This strategic approach will enable the brand to expand its footprint and offer convenient and reliable automotive services to customers in various regions. But as for Kaizen, um, well, since it's quite pretty new, um, for now, we are actually um, reaching out to business owners who, who need our um, training programs with, with such, um, it will, if they really want to put their their business to the next level. Um, with that in mind, um, I believe it will always complement in whatever I do with my business and as well as with, with Zoom Auto Spa as well. So, yeah. Well, I can tell. I mean, the success that you've had, I've met some of your team and they seem like uh, very loyal followers of, you know, the model that you're, uh, you know, creating there. So, and it sounds like you've got some more franchising and embracing of digital looking ahead. So, man, that's awesome. And I can't wait to come back to Cebu and try all the yummy uh, delicacies out there. Of course. There's a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> Any plans to come out here to Manila next? Uh, well, it's hard to say, but pretty much we will. We will. We're, awesome. we're, we're going to expand. And obviously, there's going to be a lot of business there soon as well. Cool, buddy. Well, listen, thanks a bunch for your time and sharing the journey, the things that you've learned and uh, more about the future of Zoom Auto Spa. So wishing you and Zoom Auto Spa the best in the future. Um, Prosper Nation, that's a wrap. See you, Michael. Thank you so much. Have a good one. All right. Take care. Hey, Prosper Nation. Thanks for joining us on another episode of Prosperna e-commerce stories, where we learn and share success stories of e-commerce businesses and leaders. Please comment, like, share, and subscribe. My name is Dennis Velasco, founder and CEO of Prosperna. See ya.